My crazy entitled neighbor gets angry with me and my girlfriend after we try to talk to him about an issue that we have. Things got so bad that he even stated he was going to get violent with us, claiming that he can make our lives a living nightmare. And now me and my partner feel very stuck as we are going to be in this lease for the next five months. And at this point, we seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, so this just happened maybe about an hour ago, so it is still pretty fresh. All names in this story have been changed just for safety. I'm a 20 year old male and my partner who's a 27 year old female moved in together in the summer of last year into a little neighborhood south of the city where we live now it is mostly quiet and peaceful that is except for our neighbors this man is 72 years old he's retired with a blue lives matter flag hanging on his flag post every single day along with the state flag and the american flag we generally don't mind too much as we keep to ourselves but up until this point we had a mostly friendly albeit disingenuous friendship since every Every time I talked to him, he would find some way to inject his weird political talking points into the conversation. He mentioned how he and a few of his buddies are ready to go down to the border and defend our country, how he wants to take a bulldozer to any unhoused encampments that he sees, specifically feeling the urge to say that people inside the tents should not be alive. So yeah, that's the kind of person that I get to deal with. Now, my partner's little brother also lives with us. He's 19 years old, he's in college, and he does DoorDash with his spare time. Once before, our neighbor has come over and hassled him when neither my partner nor I are home. And this is all over such weird stuff, such as leaves being knocked over in a bag, or even trash cans not being closed properly, or whatever else he feels the issue of the month is. My partner and I were running errands when my brother-in-law started texting us about how he came over and was very aggressively mad about the recycling bin being in the street for a full day after trash day. He was very uncomfortable with the situation, and when I got home, my partner and I went over there to see exactly what the issue was, just so we can prevent anything from happening in the future, and to make sure that he doesn't come hassle a teenager with these issues, and to just come to me and my partner directly. Now, we knocked on his door to try and calmly ask him not to do that, and to just bring up anything directly to me, since my brother-in-law is basically a child and shouldn't have to worry about any of this. My partner works at a smoke shop as a manager, and was able to pinpoint that he definitely was plastered immediately. When we started talking, he was getting visibly agitated that we came over to his house to try and figure out what the issue was. And he kept interrupting me while I was trying to explain why he can't come over and hassle my brother-in-law when we aren't home. At one point, my partner cut him off after he interrupted me and he just lost it. He started getting confrontational with her, saying that she should watch her mouth when she's on his property and that he can make our lives a lot harder, even leading to him making veiled threats of violence. Now, the conversation got extremely heated when he threatened to make our lives harder because we're currently renting and the landlord apparently is a friend of his. Now, here's the thing. He never has spoken to me like this, even when we've had our disagreements in the past about minimal things. But him being interrupted by a woman clearly just set him on fire. At one point, he even insulted us for renting instead of having purchased the house, even though we are actively saving for a house in a very expensive city and accusing my partner of not having a degree. Now, he has never come at me with any of these kinds of insults before, so it honestly was very jarring. I have helped this guy multiple times with things such as carrying lumber for him to his truck as well as helping him with planting and even giving him pastries I make it work and he immediately goes on the aggressive when boundaries are set. We left the situation and called our landlord immediately to explain what happened and needless to say she was shocked because the neighbor and her aren't really good friends and they haven't even spoken in months and even when they do speak it's about things like property line fence repair and stuff like that. We have five more months on this lease before we are out of this place, but I've never had a situation happen like this before. And now I'm concerned about him getting more unhinged and going out of his way to make our lives harder and just bothering us. And at this point, my partner and I seriously don't know what to do. Man, having a neighbor that's insane seriously is the worst. For me personally, my house is my safe haven. It's the one place where I want to get away from the crazy people of the world. And along with that, I just want to have normal neighbors. Having people who are intrusive or aggressive like the psychopath in this story seriously are just the worst things to deal with because you always feel on edge you're not sure what they're gonna do and it's just always a problem no matter what so in my opinion as someone who has dealt with several bad neighbors in the past it might be time to set up cameras around your property I know if I was in your shoes I would be talking to the landlord and say hey I don't feel safe around this guy and I definitely want to have some kind of camera system and the best thing about it is that these cameras for the most part nowadays are pretty easy to install like you can literally have a door 
doorbell that has a camera on it. And you can also sync up like other cameras around your property into that same system. And based on what you're describing, honestly, that might be a good idea. Also, if I was in your shoes, I would be going to the police. This guy literally said he was going to get violent with you guys. He was saying how he's going to make your life a living nightmare. Like that kind of language is so disrespectful and it is absolutely uncalled for. There's no good excuse for that and you don't have to put up with that. So hopefully you can get out of there sooner than later because this neighbor sounds like a nightmare. And I know if I was in your shoes, I would be miserable and absolutely not want to deal with this. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out. Link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Would I be the jerk if I didn't have my sister be a bridesmaid at my future wedding? All because of the way she's treating me while I'm a bridesmaid in her wedding. Because right now, I feel very upset. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, to start things out, my sister is getting married in May. We always talked about having each other as a maid of honor, since we are each other's only sister. But when she got engaged, she did not have me as her maid of honor, and instead gave that spot to my sister-in-law. Now, I'm not going to lie, it really hurt my feelings, and I tried to accept it. She changed her mind a month later due to my parents throwing a fit, and now we're sharing the title of maid of honor. Then, I had to plan the bachelorette, and I was planning it based off of what she was texting me that she wanted. However, my sister-in-law and my sister's future sister-in-laws fought me on every single choice that I made, claiming that she wanted the polar opposite, and when we all tried talking to her about it, she got mad we couldn't resolve it on our own. Eventually, the bachelorette comes around. I flew across the country to attend, and everyone completely ignored me at the bachelorette. None of the decor that I purchased was used, and the sister-in-laws took credit for the things that I had done for the trip. The first night, I went to tell my sister and other girls in the hot tub to turn the volume down to avoid a $500 noise violation fine from the Airbnb, and my sister says, ignore her, she's such a jerk, which really hurt a lot, because I put a lot of effort into the trip. The next day, I offered to do a coffee run while they were at the first bar because I didn't feel like drinking yet and I needed a coffee. Well, in the 10 minutes that I was gone, they took the one and only group picture from the trip without me present. I also found out that day that it was my sister who told my parents that I was bisexual last year without my permission and I never wanted them to know since they don't agree with that. When I said how upset I was, she just said to me, you probably snitched on me for something and you just deserved it. After the bachelorette, I was incredibly upset and when I tried talking to her about it, she only apologized by saying, I'm sorry you feel that way, and tried to defend her actions, but never actually said she was sorry for hurting me. I have barely heard from her ever since, and I also found out recently all the bridesmaids are getting their nails done together for the wedding, and I was not told about this at all. When I talked to my sister about it, she went on to say, well, I didn't know you were actually flying back, which she very easily could have texted me to ask me about that. Now, this leaves me debating if I'm the jerk for what I'm planning on doing. I know I'm getting engaged in the very near future, maybe next month I think, and I just don't know if I want her to be in the bridal party at all. She has been mean to our entire family in her wedding planning process and she has not made an effort to contribute to a relationship with me in the last few years. She doesn't even know what state I live in, even though I've lived here for years. So I really need to know. Would I be the jerk if I don't have her as a bridesmaid in my bridal party once I get engaged? Because honestly, I'm feeling very frustrated. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Yeah, I don't blame you for feeling this way at all, because it sounds like your sister is being super toxic to you for like no reason. She's completely ignoring how you feel and almost like going out of her way to throw you under the bus. And she's excluding you from everything going on in the wedding itself. Like if I was in your shoes, I might even be questioning if I want to be in this bridal party at all. So no, in my opinion, you are not the jerk for feeling upset about this. And I don't blame you for being upset too, by the way, because the way your sister's acting is honestly uncalled for, and I would not fault you for a minute if you decided that you don't want her as a bridesmaid in your future wedding. Am I the jerk for refusing to babysit for my aunt until she pays for my phone that her kids broke? Because right now, I'm being called rude, and at this point, I'm not sure what to do. Here's what happened. So my aunt and cousins are visiting from Boston. They are on school break right now, and I'm in school currently. Now, both of these kids are six years old, and they both are very rough. And since my mom and her sister seem to have a lot of catching up to do, they are out basically every single day. That leaves me and my brother and my other sister to babysit, and they are basically no help. On Saturday, I wanted to actually make them baked mac and cheese, and after putting the butter on the pan, I went to go get the flour, and 
I guess they thought it would be funny if they decided to put my phone on the stove because they moved the pan and put my phone directly on the stove. I would say it was probably there for at least 45 seconds before I noticed it was actually on the stove itself. And eventually I took it off, but there was a burning smell as well as the screen not really working. My dad sometimes will help me with them, but he was at the gym when all of this happened. And as a result, I ended up just making them something else. When my mom and aunt got back home, I immediately showed them my phone. And my mom was mad, but kind of became less mad when she found out it was my cousins. My aunt basically said, oh well, and then tended to her kids. So as a result, I told her not to expect anything from me until my phone is fixed. At the time, we couldn't really get any money back for it breaking. And my aunt basically jumped on me and said, oh, I can't afford that. For reference, the deductible for the phone was about $175. And she even said that she can't afford it, even though she didn't even know the cost of it. Well, my mom and my sister are both mad at me for being rude and for making mom miss out on quality time with her sister. And now she just mumbles and grumbles every time I walk by her. So honestly, am I the jerk in this situation? Because right now I am incredibly frustrated and I seriously now don't know what to do. I don't think you're the jerk at all. I think the way you reacted is completely reasonable. Your aunt literally needs to pay for that phone because it's her demon children that caused it to break in the first place. Like it really does sound like the original poster is relatively responsible. So I am hard pressed to judge them as someone who would put their phone on like a heated stove. I know I've put my phone in weird places, but it would never be in a place where it would obviously get broken or damaged or like, I don't know, heated up on a stove top. Like I don't think anyone would willingly put it there, especially if they're doing something that requires concentration. Like, I don't know, cooking a meal. And you know what? It is so rude for your mom and sister to be acting like, oh my God, stop being mean. You're distracting from my time with my sister. It's like, no, you're distracting me from having a phone that works. Because the fact of the matter is that her kids are the ones that broke that phone. You didn't do that on purpose. It was her kids. And I think the right thing to do would be to pay for it and find some kind of replacement for the original poster. So no, you are definitely not the jerk. And I think your aunt is absolutely on the hook. And anyone who says otherwise, in my opinion, is completely out of their mind. Today, I found a phone recording me while I was changing in my closet. And now after I found out that it's my stepdad's phone, I feel completely freaked out. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. I'm a 20 year old female and I always change in my closet. And yesterday I woke up, took my shower and came back to my room to change into my clothes. Typically I'll bring clothing into my bathroom on shower days, but yesterday was the exception. So anyways, I went back in and I reached for something on the ground and I saw a phone between my stuffed animals. I picked it up and I saw that it had been recording for the last 14 minutes. And mind you, I had only been in the closet for a minute at this point. So it was set up right after I went to take a shower. I freaked out and I brought it straight to my mom because lo and behold, this was my 40 year old stepdad's phone. Now I have no idea why he would do this. He's been in my life since I was really little. We're talking like eight years old. So I am really confused right now. He's always tried to act like my father, asking me to call him dad and in the last few years has been giving me hugs. My mom took my side and asked him to stay somewhere else while everything was being figured out. My mother and his mother are thinking it might have something to do with his alcoholism as he does drink every night, but I have no idea. I reviewed the video yesterday and you can see him come into my closet, put it between my stuffed animals and then move them a little so they hide the phone. And then he even moves one of my jackets so it doesn't block the view just so he can get the perfect video of me. When my mom confronted him, she said he looked genuinely shocked and confused, as if he didn't remember doing that. With blackouts, you can forget events, I guess, but I just feel like he didn't black out. I mean, maybe, but it just seems way too easy for him to get out of it like that. He also said something about me needing to report him to the police. My mom took that as him being blacked out and doing something that he would have never done, but I took that as him being guilty and a master manipulator. I feel so violated right now. You know in those games where you get to pick what you do and then at the end you have the option to go back and see what could have happened. I wish I could do one of those right now because I'm so confused. If he truly blacked out, what was he going to do about his phone? Would he have remembered it or what would have happened to it? I also feel bad because he's the father of my little brothers and my mother's husband. But at the same time, who would do this? She asked me if I thought I could ever forgive him if he got help and at first in shock I said maybe but after thinking about it and seeing the video and sleeping on it, today, I just don't think that I could. My mom is having me see a counselor and a therapist to talk about what happened, so I guess that is kind of good. I am thinking of taking time off of work because this 
really is turning my world upside down, and at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. First of all, I want to say I am so sorry this happened to you. Like, this is so violating, it's not even funny. This is so incredibly bad, and I'm so sorry that you're going through this because you definitely do not deserve this. But on that note, I completely agree with the original poster. I don't think this guy blacked out at all. I think that's a very convenient excuse, and he's using that as some kind of way of having very convenient amnesia. Like, I'm sorry, you hit a phone in the closet literally so you could check out your stepdaughter. This guy has problems and there is literally no good excuse for that. So if I was in your shoes and I can only speak for myself, but I would not feel bad about reporting him if I did decide to go that route, which in my opinion is not a bad idea at all. And I would not care about his status as my stepdad or as a father or a husband at all. Like all of that went out the window. Any kind of trust I would have for him or anything like that, it is now completely out the window because this guy very clearly had some ulterior motives. He was up to something very different and very sketchy and you do not deserve this in the slightest. So seriously, I really hope this all works out for you. I hope you're able to get away from your stepdad completely and I think in my opinion, especially if I was in your shoes, that I would call the police and get this reported immediately because this behavior is not normal and I would not accept any excuse that anyone would try to give me. My boyfriend woke me up in the dead of night to try and make me go do laundry for him and after dealing with this type of behavior for several months now, I seriously am at a crossroads and at this point, I really don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, so my boyfriend and I have been together for five months. We're both in college, but I don't have any roommates. So he basically lives in my dorm room. I would say like 90% of his stuff is in my room, including just about all of his clothes. Now, he does keep some in his room because it's on the other side of campus. So sometimes it's just more convenient to have an outfit or two over there. Now, I've asked him many times to help me with the laundry. I'm autistic and I have trouble doing chores and stuff with someone else in the room unless they're also doing a task, but I have the easiest time when someone's helping me out. So I'll ask him to match the socks or put shirts on hangers while I do the folding, but he never has. Sometimes he goes with me to the laundry room to put stuff in or switch it over or to bring it back, but even then, I usually have to specifically ask him to help and he complains about it the entire time. Well, this morning, I was woken up by him shaking me and telling me that he needs laundry done. I tried telling him to do it and go back to sleep but he kept shaking me and eventually I couldn't go back to sleep, which was just in time for him to roll over and do so himself. Now, I'm starting to get upset and I feel like I shouldn't. I want to talk to him about it, especially because we're moving into an apartment together this summer, but I don't really feel like I have a right to be upset here because after all, it is my dorm room. I've spent a lot of my life growing up too fast and taking care of adults that should have been taking care of me. I don't know where to draw the line when it comes to boundaries with this kind of stuff, but we both work, so I don't want to be stuck doing all the chores in our home when we move in, but I don't know if addressing anything while we're still living in the dorm room is the right call, and I don't know if I'm just being paranoid. Now, for some context, I know it's too soon to move in together since I'm 19 years old and he's 21, but we are doing so so that I can start working for our school full time. I'm required to have a local address outside of the dorms to do so, and I can't afford to live in our city on my own. Also, he has taken his laundry back to his room and has done his own loads there. I'm just frustrated with the lack of help that I'm getting because I still have to wash our sheets and our work clothing and whatever else he has here at the time. I'm honestly just so very frustrated and at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Wow, your boyfriend is being super rude to you right now. You mean to tell me that he woke you up in the middle of the night, shook you awake and said, hey, I need my clothes washed. And instead of just doing it himself, like going and physically doing it, he decided to roll over and go to sleep sleep, basically leaving you on the hook to do all this work. Like, that is incredibly rude. And in my opinion, that's like the straw that breaks the camel's back in this scenario. Because it's pretty obvious that this is like a repeated situation that just keeps on happening. He's not helping you with the laundry or like with the dorm in general. And he's basically moved into your dorm entirely. So when you say, oh, I don't have the right to be upset because it's my dorm. Well, in my opinion, it's his dorm as well. If he's living there full time and choosing to stay there over his own place, then in my opinion, he lives there as well. So he absolutely should be required to carry his weight. So I think it would be completely appropriate for you to have a conversation with him and to try and work this out well before you guys move in together. Because trust me, once you have a lease locked in and you both are on that lease and you can't just move out all of a sudden, that in my opinion is not the time to try and start addressing this. And instead, I really feel like if I was in your shoes, I would be addressing this like right now. It doesn't mean that you don't love him and it doesn't mean that you don't care about him as a person. It just means that you can't
care enough to set some kind of boundary and to say, hey, this is the stuff that I really need help with. So hopefully this all works out in some kind of way because what your boyfriend did that night is completely unacceptable. And if anything, it just shows how lazy he's currently being. And that is something that you definitely do not deserve. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.